Hey guys, my name is Holly Baxter. I'm one of the founders of Carbon. And today I want to talk about why your macros don't always add up to the calories that are listed in your tracker. So I want to use an example of a product that I think most of you are probably pretty familiar with, and that is a Quest uh, protein bar. It's a really good example for a couple of reasons, which I'll get into when I show uh, you the actual nutrition label. So let's take a look at this Quest bar. Okay, so here's the Quest bar. Um, you can see uh, the nutrition label here on the screen for you. So on the label, it actually reports uh, 180 calories for a 60 gram bar. You can see that the bar has uh, reported six grams of fat, uh, 24 grams of total carbohydrate, and 21 grams of protein. Now we know that for every gram of fat, there are nine calories. For every gram of carbohydrate, it contains four calories. And for every gram of protein, there are four calories. So if we do the math, we add those up, it actually turns out that this particular product has 234 calories. So why is the label allowed to say 180? Well, here is why. Okay, so you can see here on the label, there is also 14 grams of dietary fiber listed. Uh, and there's also a sugar alcohol here listed as erythritol, which is six grams. FDA, uh, who is kind of the governing body for food labeling, food manufacturing, they actually permit for a food manufacturer to subtract the calories that come from dietary fiber and from these sugar alcohols. These are the, the molecules or the ingredients that are actually added to provide sweetness, but with a lower calorie value than carbohydrate. The problem with that is, we're still eating those calories. So 234 calories, as I mentioned, is the actual caloric amount of this product, but the label is gonna show you, and when you enter into your food tracker, it's going to show you 180 calories. So if you ate two of these bars in one day, and that's not an unusual thing if you're busy on the go and you're traveling, you're actually getting 468 calories, but the label is gonna tell you 360. And so is your tracker. You're gonna see those calories come out in your tracker as 360. Here is the problem. Those 14 grams of fiber actually have a calorie value, and that will depend on the type of fiber that's being added. So to give you an average idea about the value of calories for fiber, it's anywhere from say two to three uh, calories. So if we do the math, those 14 grams of fiber, and we'll go on the upper end of that range of three calories per gram, that fiber is actually contributing 42 calories to that particular bar. And same can be said for sugar alcohols. And again, depending on what sugar alcohol is used, uh, some products will use glycerol, some will use uh, maltitol, some will use sorbitol, erythritol. Let's take the average value of most of these sugar alcohols. And again, that's somewhere between two to three uh, calories per gram. So if we take the upper end, or if let's just take two calories, for example, that sugar alcohol in this product or other products that also incorporate these uh, sweeteners, these artificial sweeteners, that's contributing 12 calories as well. So if we combine the two, that works out to be around 54 calories. So if we take the actual calorie value of this bar, which was 234, minus those 54 calories, that's how we're coming up with 180 calories. So something else that the food manufacturers are allowed to do is round to the nearest 10. So it depends on the actual value of the calories per serve that permits whether a food manufacturer can round to zero. So for example, if a product um, per serve has under five calories, they can list it on the label as zero. But let's say you ate seven serves of that zero calorie product. And another example is like some of the low calorie energy drinks. I drink a lot of those uh, throughout the day, but there are about two and a half uh, servings in a single can of some of these diet sodas. So therefore, if I've had one can, maybe I'm getting an extra 10 calories. So again, on the label, it's gonna be listed as zero. So in your tracker, it's gonna be listed as zero. But in actual fact, you've had more calories. So the way that I get around this is generally my blanket recommendation is to make sure you're following your macro targets. If your targets are, for example, like mine, 150 grams of protein, 250 grams of carbohydrates, and 70 grams of fat, check your macros. Don't rely on the calorie tracker 
for an accurate reflection of your calories because they're never going to perfectly align. So I wanna give you an example using the Carbon Diet Coach from one of my days last week. So you can see here, I've actually got, uh, I've gone over in my protein by 13 grams and that's indicated by the minus 13. I've got, and it's telling me I still have 22 grams of carbohydrate and I'm done for the day with my fats. Now, if you look at what it's telling me, and this is based on the labels of the food products, it's saying I've still got some calories available to me, 45 to be exact. But if we actually do the math uh, and look at what the actual calorie value is um, of my proteins, which is what I've exceeded, that comes out to 52 calories. Um, and if we look at what the um, calorie value of the carbohydrates is that I have remaining, um, that comes out to 88. So if we do some subtractions there, what I actually still have left is only 36. And again, that is because those calories from the food labels are never going to perfectly align because of the dietary fiber uh, subtractions and because of the sugar alcohol subtractions. So again, I always encourage you to monitor your actual macros. And if you need to do a quick tally at the end of the day to see that you're actually coming out on track, then that's what you do. So I hope that you have found that information useful. And if you have any more questions like this, comment below and the team will do our best to make sure that we get back to you with some answers.